Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Due to Scottish Government investment in affordable housing, the Scottish child payment and extended free school meals, Scotland has the lowest level of child poverty in the UK, in contrast to the North East, which has risen by 50 per cent on the watch of this Government. In contrast, the Prime Minister took over £1,000 from the poorest families, so much for levelling up, and those fighting to replace him have been falling over themselves to promise tax cuts to the wealthy. So if the UK is meant to be a voluntary union, does he not recognise that voters in Scotland have the right to a referendum so they can choose a fairer future? Actually, Mr Speaker, we increased the living wage across the whole of the UK uh, by £1,000. Uh, we made sure that people on universal credit uh, got their tax bills cut uh, by £1,000. And, and we've, in the last couple of weeks, we've cut, uh, uh, we've cut national insurance contributions by an average of £330. And it was because of the union that we were able to support families up and down uh, the country in Scotland uh, with the furlough and other payments to the tune of £408 billion, Mr Speaker. Since 2014, the Tory party have had more Prime Ministers than we've had referendums. May I remind the PM of the Smith Commission report that states it is agreed by all parties that nothing in this report prevents Scotland becoming an independent country. Therefore, does the Prime Minister believe in a democracy and will he respect the people of Scotland's right to self-determination? Mr Speaker, I think that uh, the people of Scotland uh, uh, do not, frankly, want to be talking about constitutional issues when there are when, uh, another referendum uh, when the issues before the country are fu- the cost of living, uh, the educational issues that we discussed, drugs, crime, Mr Speaker, I think they're far more pressing. Prime Minister, the OECD forecast the UK economy with zero growth in GDP for 2023. That would be the worst performance in the G7. Ireland, Switzerland, Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands, Iceland, Sweden, Austria, Belgium and Finland are all wealthier than the UK. Why should Scotland not be afforded the same opportunity to seek prosperity through being a sovereign, independent nation, standing as an equal amongst other equal nations? Uh, Mr Speaker, the UK uh, was the fastest in the G7 last year. We'll return to the uh, top of the table uh, soon uh, because we came out of Covid fastest, 0.5% growth in May, Mr Speaker. And the people of Scotland, don't forget, the people of Scotland, like the people of the whole of the UK, are supported by the massive fiscal firepower of the UK Treasury, and uh, and, and that is a great advantage. Well, the Prime Minister has been on the randan at Chequers. People in Scotland are suffering because of this Tory cost of living crisis, and we're paying a high price for his disastrous hard Brexit imposed against the wishes of Scottish voters. It's time to end this democracy denial, Prime Minister. Scotland can't afford to stay shackled to this crumbling union and Tory government that we don't vote for. Does the Prime Minister not accept that Scotland is a democracy? He has no right to overrule the votes of people in Scotland and we will have the referendum that we voted for. Mr Speaker, this is the, uh, the country that uh, secured uh, furlough, that delivered the vaccine across the whole of the, of the UK, while the SNP gets on with overtaxing uh, to the tune of £900 million. Pounds, Mr Speaker, that's what they're overtaxing in Scotland. And we had a referendum, Mr Speaker, in 2014.